our Pleistocene family tree is in no way restricted to simply just us, the Neanderthals, and the Denisovans. Throughout the course of the iconic epoch of the Cenozoic, the Homo genus was experimenting with evolutionary methods akin to that of any family of wild animals. Around 146,000 years ago, a species of human cropped up in the fossil record from Harbin, a city on the northeast China plain in China's Heilongjiang province. These were remains of a previously unknown member of our genus, and one that was extremely closely related to our species at that. This early human thrived in the Middle Pleistocene of China, and due to its proximity to the Longjiang area, otherwise known in English as Dragon River, the species was named Homo longi, the Dragon Man. In today's video, we will be taking a look at all aspects of this species' life. We will explore everything from what it looked like, to how it lived, and how it was initially brought to the attention of science. Join us as we travel back in time to meet the Dragon Man, one of our closest and most mysterious relatives. Taking an initial look at Homo longi's skull, it is easy to discern what sets this species apart from Homo sapiens. In contrast to our own skull, the dragon man's cranium was more shallow and elongated. A skull initially unearthed near the city of Harbin in China measured just over 220 millimeters long. Compare that to the 170 millimeters of length typically found in a Homo sapiens adult male, and you actually have the longest skull of any archaic species of human. The skull was also comparatively wide when compared to our own, the upper face in particular. Whereas the skull of a typical adult man from our own species is around 140 millimeters wide. Homo longi's skull was a little over 160 millimeters. The skull was rounded off with a large nasal opening, indicating that Homo longi would have possessed the large, broad nose, typical of many archaic humans. Its brow ridges, likewise, were thick and protruded forward and the eye sockets were larger than a typical modern human's. Homo longi's teeth were large, and the sockets in the skull for the incisors angled outward instead of down. The dentition of a typical dragon man was in fact more aligned with that of a Denisovan than our own. What's more is that the teeth discovered from the skull in Harbin are flat and worn down, indicating that this species may have eaten tougher food matter than our ancestors. As the entire postcranial skeleton for Harbin's Dragon Man was undiscovered, it is difficult to determine exactly what this species looked like in life. Given that the species was similar in proportion to Denise events and places, it is possible that the two species may have looked alike. In fact, when Homo longi was initially described, paleoanthropologists proposed that the two species may have been one and the same. These same paleoanthropologists considered the fact that Homo longi may have actually been a closer relative to Homo sapiens than the Neanderthals. But, if Homo longi is a Denisovan, this may not be the case. DNA evidence suggests that Denisovans are more closely related to Neanderthals than to us.
Homo longi's skull, the sole specimen known to science, was first uncovered not by paleoanthropologists or archaeologists, but by a local laborer who simply happened across the skull whilst working on the banks of the Songhua River in 1933. He was part of a team building the Dongjiang Bridge, which would connect up with the then Japanese Manchukuo National Railway. He initially hid the skull from authorities in a nearby well, having recognized its importance off the back of the recently discovered Peking Man. When Japanese forces were removed from the region following the Soviet invasion, the laborer withheld information about his building work for the Japanese government and subsequently could not report that he knew anything about the skull. It is not until three generations later that his family finally learned of the skull, recovering it from the well in 2018. They took it to scientist Qi Qiang, who persuaded them to donate the skull to the Hebei Geo University. It has been stored there ever since, where scientists have been eager to name it as a new species. The Homo longi specimen in question is a male, estimated to be roughly 50 years old, and would have been a strong and formidable person given his size. A key thing that can be discerned about Homo longi from the lone skull known to science is the fact that it was likely highly intelligent at least on a similar level to a Neanderthal or Denisovan. The brain volume of this species was over 1,400 cc's, not too far off that of a modern-day human. In fact, Homo longi's brain was massive in comparison to that of other early human species, and the area of the skull that would have contained the frontal lobe of the brain is much more highly developed than the same area in Neanderthals. While the remains do still show some archaic features, such as several weakly developed parts of the skull associated with the brain, the possibility exists that Homo longi was perhaps the most intelligent species of extinct human to evolve. There is also reason to believe that, like Neanderthals, Homo longi may have lived a dangerous lifestyle. The left parietal section of the skull is scattered with various marks and indentations, which may indicate that this individual suffered a long-lasting injury, but one that healed over time. The known skull also lacks evidence that the second molar tooth on the upper left met with the third molar, and that there was a large gap between the two teeth. This may have been a dental defect, the result of an injury, or potentially evidence that the third molar was entirely missing in the individual the skull belonged to. Homo longi also shared the land with a plethora of large, dangerous animals. Mammoths, woolly rhinoceroses, and large brown bears are known from the region. It is possible that these animals could have been a direct contributor to some of these afflictions. Homo longi likely had a varied diet, but with its large and powerful teeth, could probably tackle tougher food than Homo sapien individuals. Amidst the landscape, roamed herds of deer, horses, and antelope, which would have been on the menu for early Homo longi family groups, as well as fruits, nuts, and other plant matter that thrived across their steppe environment. Due to the fact that no tools have been discovered that can be attributed to Homo longi, it is difficult to discern exactly how the species lived and what kinds of technologies were available to it. 
we can assume that the tools used by Homo longi may have been similar to those of the Denisovans living in similar areas, namely stone flakes, cutting tools, and scrapers. However, due to the size of the dragon man's brain, it is possible that these tools were even slightly more advanced. Homo longi probably sheltered in caves on the faces of hills and mountains out on the ancient Chinese steppe, where it likely lived in family groups or small troops. Homo longi lived and survived in the penultimate glacial period of the Cenozoic, towards the middle Pleistocene epoch. This was characterized by a time of permafrost dominating the frigid north of Eurasia, whilst trickling down to the south in patches across the dramatic steppe landscapes. These landscapes were rife with tough grasses and open plains, with sparse tree coverage. The climates were cold and harsh, with tough winters and seasonally warm periods over the summer and spring times, when large migratory animals traveled en masse to the locale. To be precise, Homo longi lived in what has become known as the Northeast China Plain, a vast region in Central and Eastern Asia covering parts of what is now China and Southern Russia. Much of the fauna present here was familiar throughout the end of the Pleistocene, and many of the animals present in the region would later go on to coexist and be hunted by our ancestors. The wildlife of the region is grouped together to be collectively known as the Mammothus and Celadonta fauna, a group of typically large animals that were well adapted to the frosty, barren environments. Amongst the steppe, was large herds of woolly mammoths. The huge, famous proboscideans, so synonymous with the ice ages of the Pleistocene. It is unknown whether or not the dragon men had the technology to bring down animals as large as mammoths, but if their likeness to later human species is taken into consideration, it is a possibility. Woolly rhinoceroses, in the genus Celodonta, would have roamed these plains also, their large and powerful bodies posing a significant threat to any Homo longi groups thinking of hunting them. Homo longi's localities were also populated by animals that were unique to that specific region, and some of them were truly spectacular. Among them, was Sinomegaceris ordocianus, a species of giant Chinese deer. The massive size of these animals was met by the massive size of their antlers. Huge plate-like structures blossomed from the back of these animals' heads in males, creating a dramatic display to females and rivals. There is little doubt that some of these giant deer met their end at the hands of our early relatives. Ancient buffalo, such as Babalus wanzijagai, also inhabited the region. These were large, powerful herbivores with sharp, backward-facing horns. A whole host of extant animals populated the region too. Elk amongst other deer species, would have lived alongside brown bears, wolves, and wild horse species, such as Przewalski's wild horse, an animal that has recently been brought back from the furthest brink of extinction. Alongside these animals would have thrived a plethora of birds, fish, invertebrates, and selected amphibians and reptiles many of which would have been depended on by our early Dragon Man relatives. 
bird eggs would have been consumed, as would have many of the fish in the rivers and lakes cutting through the vast open steppe. From a skull alone, it is difficult for scientists to figure out exactly how this species came to be. It is possible that Homo longi could have been a Denisovan, as the famously well-preserved Jiaha mandible, which belonged to a Denisovan, was strikingly similar and discovered in a nearby region. The skull is also similar to that of a specimen named Dolly Man, a skull which may have belonged to a late surviving Homo erectus or even an early Homo sapiens individual discovered in China's Shangxi province in 1978. As these remains are all so similar, it is hard for scientists to determine whether or not Homo longi was a distinct species, or if the Harbin skull represents missing pieces of a species previously named and described. If all of these species were the same, then Homo longi would become an obsolete species. Instead, the name Homo doliensis would go to these early humans, the name that was initially given to the Dolly Man. However, the jury is still out, and it remains a possibility that each of them are separate species. With just a skull to go off, taxonomy can be a minefield. Homo longi is a great example of how occasionally mysterious species within our own genus can be. We know more about many species of dinosaur than we do about some of the early humans in the genus Homo, which considering some of our ancestors actually met these species, it is mind-blowing to think about. For now, Homo longi's secrets are buried deep within the sediments of ancient China. But who knows what could happen next? Perhaps another chance encounter could reveal a whole new world of information to science about this long-lost species.